Spokane's very first televised civics competition is back for season two. The stakes are even higher this year, and more schools, more questions for the answering. Teams from Spokane area high schools are testing their civics knowledge while in pursuit of that championship win. The Civics Bowl is made possible by Eastern Washington University, Canopy Credit Union, the Avista Foundation, the League of Women Voters of the Spokane area and of Washington, and by viewers like you. Hello and welcome. I'm your host for Civics Bowl, as well as President and General Manager of KSPS, Gary Stokes. We hope you've been enjoying the tournament this season, and if you're just joining us, good timing, because this is the first of our two semifinal matchups. Let's take a look at the tournament bracket. Four teams have advanced to the semifinals. Today, one of those teams will advance to the championship match. Will it be Liberty High School, or will it be Lewis and Clark High School? Let's meet each team now. Liberty High School, we'll start with you. I'm Eli. I'm Isabel. I'm Mitchell. I'm Henry. Thank you all. And in the audience, we have Liberty's alternate Dylan and their coach, Ken Van Sickle. Lewis and Clark High School also returns this week. Let's meet the players. I'm Molly. I'm Arun. I'm Owen. I'm Varun. And we want to also welcome LC's alternate, Sylvie, and their coach, Megan Gomez. Thanks for being here, teams. The questions are getting just a little bit harder now that we're in the semifinals. I also want to quickly thank the Spokane branch of the League of Women Voters. Volunteers from the organization wrote the hundreds of questions needed for the tournament. Okay, let's look at the rules for our first round, the toss-up round. I'll ask a toss-up question to all players. You must wait until I've finished reading the question, then you can buzz in to answer. Whichever team answers the toss-up question correctly will receive a bonus question. All questions in this round are worth 10 points. There is no deduction for wrong answers. You are encouraged to collaborate with your teammates only on the bonus question. Teams, are you ready? Let's go. What does the word suffrage mean? Mitchell. The right to vote. That is correct. Here's your bonus. True or false, each state has the power to set voter qualifications. Mm, I don't think so. False. The answer is true. Here's your toss-up. Registration is a procedure of voter identification. What is it intended to prevent? Arun. Uh, voter fraud. That is correct. Only one state, and here's your bonus, only one state does not require voter registration. Which state is that? North Dakota. That is correct. Toss up, both teams. What is the name of the federal law enacted in 1993 that made voter registration easier for the states? Arun. The uh, Voter Registration Act. That is incorrect. Liberty? Motor Voter Act. Motor Voter Act. Here is your next toss up. Local author Sharma Shields with your video question. Hi, I'm local novelist Sharma Shields, author of The Cassandra. Here's your question. Which amendment gave women the right to vote in federal elections? Mitchell. The 19th. That is correct. And here's your bonus. Even before women were permitted to vote in federal elections, which state first gave women the right to vote in a state election? Wyoming. That is correct. Here's your toss up. Which amendment provides that states cannot set the minimum age for voting any higher than 18 years of age? Mitchell. 26. That is correct. And here is your bonus. Under the argument, old enough to fight, old enough to vote, what was the main influence that led to the lowering of the voting age from 21 to 18? The Vietnam War and the accompanying draft. That is correct. Here's your next toss up. In some states, what was the special tax call that was required in order to vote? Eli. Poll tax. That is correct. And here's your bonus. Which amendment eliminated the poll tax or any other tax required to vote in a federal election? 22nd. 24th. Here's your toss up. In 1966, what body eliminated the poll tax or other tax requirement in all elections, not just federal elections? Mitchell. The Supreme Court. That is correct. And here's your bonus. Give one reason the Supreme Court used in its decision to ban all poll tax payment requirements. The Equal Protection Clause. That is correct. And here's your toss-up and another guest presenter. 
Hi, I'm Denny Heck, the Lieutenant Governor of Washington. Here's your question. In the United States, powers that are shared among the federal and state governments are called what? A room. Um, would they be uh, exclusive powers? That is incorrect, Liberty. Mitchell? Shared powers? That is also incorrect, concurrent powers, concurrent powers. All right, let's move on to the next toss up. Article 4, Section 4 of the Constitution says the United States shall guarantee to every state in the Union the Republican form of government. In short, what does that mean? Arun. Um, they, they, uh, that the uh, people have to be represented in the government? That is correct, and here's your bonus. A Republican form of government is just one part of the guarantee clause outlined in Article 4, Section 4. It also guarantees each state in the Union protection from what threat? Denying of their equal amount of seats in the Senate. That is incorrect. The answer is invasion. Invasion. Here's your next toss up. Article 4, Section 1 of the Constitution requires the states to respect the laws and court decisions of other states. What is this clause called? Mitchell. Full faith and credit. That is correct. Here's your bonus. Article 4, Section 2 of the Constitution says that citizens visiting other states are entitled to the same rights and status as citizens who reside within that state. What is this clause called? No answer. Privileges and Immunities Clause. Here's your next toss-up. What are the two kinds of juries in the American legal system? Mitchell. Uh, trial jury and a grand jury. That is correct. And here's your bonus. What's the major function of a grand jury? A grand jury is used to determine if there's enough evidence to indict someone for a major crime. That is correct. Here's your toss-up. How are judges selected for Washington state courts? Arun. They're elected. That is correct. And here's your bonus. What are the arguments for and against the popular election of judges? Give one example for either for or against. For, for against, it could be that the people could vote for someone without proper legal qualifications. For for, it could be that the people have uh, input as to selecting judges, unlike in the federal government. That is correct. Here's your next toss up. What is the highest court in Washington State's judicial system? Mitchell. The Washington Supreme Court. That is correct. And here's your bonus. What's the main function of the Washington Supreme Court? to determine if laws of the state align with the state's constitution. To hear appeals from the Washington Court of Appeals. Here's your next toss up. In local government, what do we call an independent unit created to perform one or more related government functions? Mitchell. Government body. That is incorrect. Elsie. Um, a representative body. That is also incorrect. It's a special district, a special district. And that was the last question. Great job, teams. And we will be back with a scoring update right after this. And we'll also have a chance to meet our players. Here's the answer to last week's question. Every person who files a federal income tax return can assign $3 of their tax bill to the Presidential Election Campaign Fund. What percentage of taxpayers checked the yes box in 2020? 1.74%, 3.56%, 12.3%, or 45.82%? The correct answer is B, 3.56%. While that is a small percentage of Americans, it still generated more than $24 million in 2020. The money is used to subsidize pre-convention and presidential election campaigns. The Federal Election Commission administers the public funds to qualifying candidates. By the way, checking yes on your return does not increase the amount of tax you owe, nor does it decrease any refund you may be entitled to. It simply designates that $3 goes into this fund rather than the regular pool of tax dollars. Stay tuned. This week's question is coming up later in the show. Welcome back. We'd like to take a couple of minutes to chat with our players. Team Liberty, I'm going to start with you. We'd like to know what is your grade level and your plans after graduation. I'm a senior and I plan to become a lineman after high school. 
Uh, I'm also a senior, and I am planning to uh, go to Chicago uh, to become an illustrator. Mitchell. Uh, I'm a sophomore, and I'm planning on going and getting a doctorate in history. And Henry? I'm a senior, and I'm planning on becoming a software developer. Let's hear from the players from Lewis and Clark now. Players, same question to you. What's your grade level, and what are your plans after high school? Molly. Uh, I'm a senior, and next year I'm headed to the University of Pennsylvania. Arun? Uh, I'm a senior, and next year I plan to go to college to study economics. Owen? I'm a senior, and next year I'll be going to college to study biology. And Varun? Hi, I'm a junior, and I plan to go into the medical field after high school. Excellent. Lots of exciting things ahead for you guys, and thank you for sharing. We're going to get back to the game next with the head-to-head -head round. We're back on the head-to-head -head set now, where players will face each other one-on-one. -on -one. Teams, here are the rules. Just as with the last round, you must wait for me to finish asking the question, then you can buzz in to answer. Correct answers are worth 10 points. No deductions for wrong answers. And teams, you are not allowed to work together in this round. Let's remind everyone of the score. Liberty 120, LC 50. Are you ready? Let's go. What is the term for a policy or set of policies characterized by a nation's refusal to become generally involved in the affairs of the rest of the world? Isolationism? That is correct. What U.S. federal policy created in 1883 warned European countries to stay out of the affairs of North and South America? Monroe Doctrine. That is correct. According to 19th century Americans, what was the country's manifest destiny? Uh, expanding the country to the west. That is correct. In campaign financing, what does the acronym PAC stand for? Political Action Committee. Correct. Briefly explain what a political action committee does. Uh, they raise money for the party that they are associated with. That is correct. What is it called when a strong candidate, usually at or near the top of the ballot, helps attract voters to other candidates on the party's ticket? Tail code effect. Tail code effect. Incorrect. Uh, would it be the down ballot effect? That, was, that is also incorrect. It is the coattail effect. Next, name the presidential power that allows the president to refuse to disclose certain information to Congress or federal courts. Executive privilege. Next, the 1974 Supreme Court case, United States v. Nixon, found that presidential executive privilege can be claimed for what reason? National security. What is the purpose of the shield law? To shield the president from danger. Incorrect. To protect the nation? Protect journalists during legal proceedings from being forced to reveal sources. Next. When is the only time in US history that the Supreme Court declared that several states did not have the required Republican form of government? The Civil War? That is correct. Congress has established a number of crimes based on the postal power which provides for the carrying of the mail. Give one example. It is a crime to obstruct the mail. It is a crime to use the mail to commit any criminal act. It's a crime to mail poisons, explosives, etc. It's also a crime to mail into any state any article prohibited by that state's law. And here's your last question. What is the American economic system called? Capitalism. That is correct. All right, we are done. We will update the scores and we will come back just in time for the category round. See you then. KSPS Public Television would like to thank the League of Women Voters of the Spokane area for its participation in the Civics Bowl. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan political organization that encourages the informed and active participation of citizens in government. Over time, the League's work has evolved from efforts to gain and foster women's suffrage to ensuring that all eligible voters have the opportunity and the information to exercise their right to vote. If you are interested in making a difference with education and advocacy, join the League. Learn more about the Washington League and the Spokane League by visiting the links on your screen. Welcome back. It's time for the category round. 
In this round, teams will answer questions from the following categories. The feudal system, which branch, requirements to serve, international trade, and at the movies. Each category has five questions that increase in point value from 10 to 30. Teams will alternate choosing a category. You can pick any category. However, you cannot jump ahead in point value. Points are deducted for wrong answers in this round. You will work together to answer each question. Now, there's some strategy involved in this round. You can pass on a question, which means you can choose not to answer and no points will be deducted. You can also toss a question to the other team, and that receiving team is then forced to answer that question and either win or lose the associated points. But you can only toss a question three times, so use them wisely. Let's remind everyone of the score. Liberty 170 and LC 70. Teams, if you're ready, let's begin. Lewis and Clark, you get the first pick. Uh, we'll do At the Movies for 10. At the Movies for 10, name the film. Meryl Streep as President of the United States, who seems indifferent about a comet on a collision course with Earth. Don't look up. That is correct. Liberty. Which branch, 10? Which branch for 10? Which branch of the US federal government makes laws? The legislative branch. That is correct. Lewis and Clark. Which branch, 15, please? Which branch for 15? Which branch of the U.S. federal government enforces laws? The executive. That is correct. Liberty. Which branch for 20? Which branch for 20? Which branch of the U.S. federal government settles disputes? Judicial branch. Correct. Which branch, 25? Which branch of the U.S. federal government frames public policy? Answer. Legislative branch. That is correct. Liberty. Which branch for 30? Which branch for 30? Which branch of the U.S. federal government interprets laws? The judicial branch. That is correct. And which branch is done? Elsa. Yeah. Movies for 15. What is the title of the historical drama starring Daniel Day Lewis as Abraham Lincoln? Lincoln. That is correct. Liberty. Feudal system. 10. During which time frame was the feudal system of governing dominant in Europe? Middle Ages. That is correct. Elsie. Excuse me? Movies for 20, please. Movies for 20. All the President's Men tells the story of how reporters at what newspaper broke the story about Watergate? The Washington Post. That is correct. Liberty. Feudal system for 15. Feudal for 15. Once again, here's local author Sharma Shields with your video question. In the loosely organized feudal system, who held the most power and who held the least power? The most power was held by the uh, feudal lords and the least power was held by serfs and peasants. That is correct. Yep. Wilson Clark. Uh, movies for 25. Movies for 25. The film Malcolm X follows the story of the iconic civil rights leader from his youth through his rise as an activist and his eventual assassination. Who played Malcolm X in the film? Denzel Washington. That is correct. Liberty. Feudal system for 20, please. Under the European feudal system, the powers of which church rose to rival the power held by lords? The Roman Catholic Church. That is correct. Movies for 30. Movies for 30 and finishing this category. When a corrupt senator dies, he's replaced by honest and naive Jefferson Smith, who discovers the corruption in Washington for himself and tries to fight it. What is the title of this 1939 quintessential film about American politics? No, what was the guy's name that goes to? Huh? We'll toss. Liberty? Mr. Smith goes to Washington. That is correct, and that category is over, and Liberty, it's your pick. Feudal system for 25, please. What is one major occurrence in the Middle Ages that helped bring about the end of the feudal system? Black death. That is correct. We'll see. Uh, feudal for 30. Feudal for 30. As feudalism disappeared, what political system became more dominant? Um, monarchy of small states. That is correct. And that category is done. Liberty. 
requirements to serve for 10. How old do you have to be to serve in the U.S. House of Representatives? 25 years old. That is correct. Requirements to serve for 15. How old do you have to be to serve in the U.S. Senate? 30 years. Correct. Requirements to serve 20. The citizenship requirements also differ between the U.S. House and Senate. How many years do you have to be a U.S. citizen before you can serve in each? Seven and nine. Seven and nine years for the House and Senate, respectively. That is correct. You want to do 20 or 20? Yeah. yeah, we'll do 20 for requirements to serve. Once again, here's Lieutenant Governor Denny Heck with your video question. According to the U.S. Constitution, what are the three requirements to hold the office of the President of the United States? Uh, yes. You have to be at least 35 years of age, you have to be a natural born U.S. citizen, and you have to have lived in the United States for at least 14 years. That is correct. Requirements to serve, 30. Closing out this category, what are the constitutional requirements for becoming a Supreme Court Justice? There aren't any. That is correct. And that category is closed. And that leaves international trade. Yep, we'll do that for 10. Which trade agreement replaced NAFTA in 2020? The USMCA. That is correct. And that was the last question. Congratulations. Great job, team. That also means that only one round remains before we find out who's going to the championship. The lightning round is coming up next. Billions of banknotes, what most of us call cash, are printed each year in the United States. More than 70% of those notes will be used to replace torn or otherwise unfit bills that are removed from circulation. What is the average lifespan of a $20 bill? A, 2.5 years. B, 7.9 years. C, 8.5 years. D, 15 years. Do you know the answer? Follow the QR code on your screen or go to ksps.org slash civicsbowl to submit your answer and be entered into a drawing to win a prize. The deadline to enter is Monday at noon. And please, you're on the honor system here. No Googling. We will contact the winner directly and let you all know the right answer next week on Civics Bowl. Welcome back. It's time for the lightning round. And this one will put a minute and 30 seconds on the clock. And this is your chance to answer as many questions as you can in that time. Each question is worth 20 points. Points are deducted for wrong answers and you answer individually in this round so no conferring is allowed. Let's get a final check of the score. Liberty 390, LC 260. Teams, are you ready? Lightning round begins. Let's go. What term can be applied to a nation without government? Arun. An anarchist state. Correct. Which state's legislature waited until 1995 to ratify the 13th Amendment, which outlawed slavery, and failed to make ratification official until 2013? Arun. Mississippi. Correct. What is the name of the ordinance that served as the basis for legislation regarding the nation's territorial possessions? Mitchell. Northern Territories. That is incorrect. Northwest Ordinance. Two states were independent republics before being admitted to the United States. Name one. Mitchell. Texas. That is correct. Which state before being admitted into the Union was prohibited by Congress from claiming title to any land legally held by Native Americans? Arun. Oklahoma. Alaska. True or false, if the president decides to veto a bill, he or she must reject the entire bill, not just a portion of it. Mitchell. True. That is correct. Unlike the numerous titles given to various units of the executive branch, the title department is reserved for special use. What is that use? Cabinet level agencies. Is burning a cross in front of a person's house protected by the First Amendment? Varun. No. That is correct. What is it called when an American citizen, whether native born or naturalized, voluntarily renounces his or her citizenship? Varun. Renunciation of their citizenship. That is incorrect. Expatriation. True or false, Congress can remove a person's citizenship by birth with automatic. And that wraps it up. Taking a look at the final score, Liberty 410, Lewis and Clark 280. That was an amazing, amazing round. <laughs> and
And that also means that Liberty will advance to the championship in just a couple of weeks. Teams, this has been a great one to watch, and it's a shame that one team has to go home, but it's been a pleasure to watch and a pleasure to watch you throughout this season. So congratulations again, and we look forward to seeing you next week for the second semifinal matchup. Central Valley and the Community School will play for that second spot in the championship. We hope you enjoyed playing along at home, and we'll see you next week on Civics Bowl. Civics Bowl is made possible by Eastern Washington University, Canopy Credit Union, the Avista Foundation, the League of Women Voters of the Spokane area and of Washington, and by viewers like you. If you are a regional school interested in taking part in Civics Bowl next year, we want to know. Go to ksps.org slash civicsbowl to fill out our online contact form.